we are in the international year of the cooperative. The United Nations has designated 2012 as the year for global recognition of the cooperative business model in all the various sectors that it exists. And NCBA is the apex organization for the national cooperative uh, community in the United States is, is, one, is the lead organization in that international observance. And we're, uh, we're, there's information in your packet about the international year, and I encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, for those of you who may be new to co-op or, or know a little bit about it, I'd just like to give you a little bit of perspective. Uh, one, that there are 29,000 cooperatives in the United States, uh, and they contribute 2 million jobs and $650 billion to the U.S. economy. And one of the things we find, those of us in the co-op sector, is we realize how invisible co-ops can be to a lot of folks, where you may know that there is an egg cooperative, but or agriculture cooperative. I notice I need to say agriculture rather than egg. Uh, and that there are housing cooperatives, there are food cooperatives, there are uh, Housing, uh, housing, I said, home care cooperatives, which we featured last year at this program, uh, purchasing cooperatives, worker cooperatives, uh, all over the country. And one way that you will be able to find them all easier is in the um, couple months, we will have a new app. This is the world of apps. And there will be a co-op app um, called where.coop. And it is actually, Judy, you'd appreciate this, that the University of Wisconsin database, which Department of Agriculture contributed to developing, is the primary source for this app. And it will enable people to stand on a street corner and enter where they are and find all the co-ops that are right there in that area. So it's not just by zip code. It's, it's going to be very user friendly. It will then allow you to be able to find out how you can shop at a co-op. <clears throat> that's more visible. So that this is something that will be um, launched on July 7th, which is the International Day of the Cooperative. We're going to focus on housing co-ops, just that one form, and how the co-op model is being used creatively in the manufactured housing space to give rural communities access to affordable and energy efficient uh, co-op housing. Today you're going to hear from a variety of speakers, and we will be, we're videotaping this program so that we have it. It'll be available online in all its component parts uh, on the CDF website later. But you'll hear first about how traditional trailer parks, as many of us remember them, are now becoming housing cooperatives or resident-owned communities, and how that has really changed everything for the residents of those communities. Uh, in the way they interact with each other, their interest in th their community, and really building a sense of community. You're also going to hear about a five-unit manufactured housing co-op, not a trailer park, but a built-from-the-ground uh, manufactured housing uh, co-op in rural Wisconsin, where five units of freestanding manufactured um, assist uh, uh, universal design, was, losing the word there, uh, which will allow aging in place for seniors in, in those communities. You're also going to hear about the challenges of achieving energy efficiency in manufactured housing. You're going to hear about an innovative program that's, that's avail making it possible for affordable housing to be, for people with, to get access to energy efficiency affordable housing. You're going to hear about supply and demand of affordable housing in rural communities. You're also going to hear from a member of Congress later this afternoon who is passionately a believer in the energy efficiency uh, and the need for that more of that with affordable housing. You're going to hear about USDA's interests in affordable rural housing and what, it, what they're doing to assist uh, development of manufactured housing co-ops. You're going to hear from some of the rural electric community as to the challenges they're facing in the inefficiency of the current housing stock in their territory. And you're going to hear about the challenges, uh, challenges in trying to get upgrades. And then you're going to hear about how a co-op housing is much more than just a place to live, that it's a community and it's a business in which its members have rights and responsibilities that are new to them and that they need to have training 
and in the governance and the management of the business. The Older Americans Act is established that once every decade, delegates will come to Washington to give the administration and the Congress advice on priorities for uh, aging policies and initiatives for the next decade. In 2005, we participated through the Cooperative Development Foundation in some of the, the groundwork sessions for that 2005 conference. And affordable housing was one of the issues that came out of that. And we introduced some of the co-op model to it. My hope is that when that conference convenes in 2015, that co-op housing is identified as one of the areas that we really are going to focus on. Say a big thank you to USDA. We wouldn't be here today without the financial support through a rural cooperative development grant that Cooperative Development Foundation received for doing its work in this area. This is one of the major research, it's an educational program that, that allows us to reach out to a lot of the community that, that we need to, to touch and we couldn't do it again without USDA.